Grab your knives and forks, maybe a spoon. Man, I'm hungry. I'm Dave Morris. This is Dave Cathy. Time to talk about the bites of food you can get around Oklahoma City. Man, there are some good bites in this town. There is. It's getting better all the time. This past weekend, I was at Broadway 10. Mm -hmm. I was at Marietti's over at 21C, and I was at the Sunnyside Cafe, which we will get to at yeah. the end of this segment. Yeah. Fantastic plates all around. Yeah, it's it's exciting time. Had a little bit of a lull in the spring. The, the new year came along. Lots of openings, lots of closings, unfortunately. Uh, but then the spring comes, and it's sort of we kind of see how things go. And now here we are again. You caught up with the big Kahuna on that very couch I right did. over there, I did. Mr. Fly Fresher himself, and he's got some news. Yeah, he did. He talked to us about uh, what's happening with the old space over at the coach house. Well, chef, you've got a lot going on in your life. You're you know over here vast. You like to yeah. loom over everybody. But let us not forget about where you came from, the Coach House. The Coach House? Yeah, what's Got going fun on? Stuff. Well, uh, we are in the middle of a remodel. Uh, it's going to be called the Hutch on Avondale. Hutch on Avondale. Uh, you know, my son Kyle's uh, manager, and uh, David Henry is going to be the chef. Okay. And uh, they've been doing pop-ups, kind of working their way through the menu and cocktails and everything. So uh, we've gotten the guts of the restaurant completely redone. It's an old building. I mean, it's yeah. over 40 years yeah. old. Yeah. So uh, completely redoing the AC, the electric, and everything else. Uh, and then we're going to have, uh, you get to do the fun stuff here coming yeah. up. So. Yeah, and that's the thing. You know, the, it's... The Hutch, it's sort of been a, a secret, but not a real secret because the pop-ups have all been called the Hutch. Yeah. But but officially, it's it's here now. And well, it's so kind of funny because the Hutch is, we said there's still going to be a little bit of the Coach House uh -huh. in there, which is uh, the Coach TCH, right. and, and the Hutch is H-U-T-C-H. So it's kind right. of a little play on rules. Yeah, there you and, go. And the guys really liked it. And it's yeah. kind of more casual and fun. So we're, yeah. we're, we're working on our, our new logos and stuff. So it's, it's getting exciting. Well, that's great. And so... Craft cocktails, right? That's kind of... Craft cocktails, but I mean, it's going to be so many things. Mm -hmm. it, uh, you know, you can go in there and, you know, we'll have some beers on tap now. Mm -hmm. We're going to have cocktails. We've already got a good lineup of some good bartenders mm -hmm. and servers in town. We're going to have, you could get a brisket sandwich and chicken mm -hmm. wings, or you can get a seven-course tasting menu. That, there you go. That, that's unsurpassed there in you town. Go. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be a little bit... More user-friendly, a little bit more accessible, a little yeah, more casual. It's evolved, sounds like. Yeah, I hate to say casual because then everybody thinks of the fast casual change. Right, it's not, right, right. It's not going to be that casual. It's full it's service. It's going to be a delicious casual. <laughs> and now you, yeah, full service. And, and but now is the bar, tell me a little bit, the bar is going to be sort of in, at the center of this thing? Is that right? Right. Well, well, what we did before was we just had the service bar, if you've ever mm -hmm. been in the coach right. house before. So what we did is instead of taking the bar and going out into the dining room, we have as many tables as we had before, but what we did is we kind of imploded. We picked up some space in the back of the restaurant, and so we, we dug back into the restaurant at a 16-seat bar. Mm -hmm. It's going to have an open kitchen. We're going to have six stools at a food bar right when you walk in the oh, door, cool. so you'll be able to sit there and, while the chefs are preparing and maybe get little tidbits or wow. do a tasting menu or, or you know, kind of get the inside scoop on what's, what we have that night. Very cool. Well, you got everybody kind of lathered up for it. When are you going to open this thing up? Uh, we're thinking August now because okay. some of those, some of the guts repair stuff were a little yeah. more extensive than, than the buildings. The, well, you know, and, and talking about uh, casual too, you know, uh, you know, you go to Louisville, you go to those places where the people are dressed down and everything, mm -hmm. which I don't mind that, but mm -hmm. they don't follow through the service. We're still mm -hmm. going to have great service and right. we're going to, all the service standards will be covered. So I don't right. want to, I don't want to. Right, yeah, I, yeah I think that uh, you and I have known each other for a while, and for a long time, I think you probably, this is something that is uh, exciting to sort oh, yeah. of turn the crank into the future a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and, and get that more casual atmosphere, yeah. but not give up things. Exactly. We're not giving up anything. My guess is quality food's still going to right. happen at the Coach right. House, the Hutch. You yep. could call it the shack on Western, and it would still be good. <laughs> That's right. With the, with, the, with the folks they've got involved over there, the years of experience, the expertise, it's going to be top notch. There's another restaurant that has a ton of buzz and has for months. I have never and never did go there at Bonjour. Bonjour, yes. Yes, Bonjour. It's, it's a quirky story. Chef Vung Nguyen, uh, he was the chef behind Guernsey Park when it opened. Uh, this is a little breakfast and lunch place that he opened uh, on the far northwest side of town. He actually closed it for breakfast and lunch over the weekend, but that is all because he has a new place that he is preparing to open. And so he is converting uh, Bonjour into a sort of a supper club from now until his new place opens. And he told us all about that and his new place, which is going to be called Cafe Melange. So good things are expected there. Uh, it's just, you know, Vung, when he came in and talked to us about it, he was very passionate. He's uh, dedicated to something he calls Brenner. 
Brenner, I like it. <laughs> Should go over well in this market. That's right. Everybody and loves some brunch. Everybody loves dinner. Yeah. That's right. And yeah, and, and he told us all about how uh, how you can uh, get a get a reservation for Brenner at his uh, Bonjour right now to help him uh, develop the menu for the new place. He did something over the weekend that broke my heart. I know. We closed down breakfast and lunch. No, uh, I was just going to say you sent KD out to... No. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. KD uh, can go. Bonjour, though. Yes. It's closed. Yes. But it's not. But it's not. All right. Tell, t tell the story. What's going on? Um, right now, we're closing down breakfast and lunch so I can start uh, recipe testing for the new place. Yes. The new, new place. The new place. It's called Cafe Melange. Okay. Cafe Melange. There yeah. Location. Uh, I haven't signed yet, so it's not on a hard paper, so I don't want to say anything. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, I mean, we're signing this week, but making mm -hmm. sure that everything is going to be concrete before mm -hmm. uh, say anything. But uh, yeah, it's going to be over there. So Cafe Melange will have breakfast, lunch, and Brenner. Brenner. Define Brenner. Brenner is a breakfast dinner. A breakfast dinner, which yeah. everybody I know has that in their repertoire. Yes, you breakfast know. dinner. I mean, and now you're going to offer it for the public. Yes. Sorry. I mean, Take us through it. It's basically just you know incorporating what you love for breakfast and eating it for dinner, not just per se of like just okay, I'm gonna slop an egg on it. Right. Here we go. We're gonna do smoked scallops with mm -hmm. some cheddar cheese pancakes. Do a bacon tomato jam. Mm -hmm. Do a little slaw and nice barbecue sauce that we make. And that's one of it. Do our tarragon waffle with some seared shrimp. You know, yeah. That's kind of infusion that so I... So kind of flipping yes. the idea of what the things that we normally eat for breakfast can be. Kind of right. expanding their possibilities. Exactly. Ah, what a surprise that you're doing and, something innovative. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's like just having fun with it and like just yeah. doing something different and challenging ourselves and, you know, and grow as time sure. goes on. And sure. That's part of it. Okay, so Bonjour is no longer open for breakfast and lunch, but it's open for Brenner. Brenner. So uh, testing. We're doing yeah. our testing grounds right now. So uh, we're going from 6 30, um, you know, one seating. It's mm -hmm. from Tuesday through Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a seven course every week. Every week's okay. going to be a different menu. We get to try something different all the time. Um, you know, every week that progresses, you're going to see the progression. I see. Cause so, so people can kind of be a part yes. of the development of the menu for Cafe Melange. Yes. Very cool. And, you know, for me, it's like teaching the, the new kids. It's You have to take it that simple, that yeah. basic first, because if we just go in like, hey, here, this is what we're going to do, they're never going to learn. Right. I mean, I'm not going to teach them how to do spheres and all this great stuff that we want to do, and then he doesn't know how to cut a right. bell pepper. Right. Yeah. Right. So you're basically, you know, getting your, your staff in line yes. with these dinners. Kind of it's a training ground for them. Yes. And an opportunity for folks to sort of be a part, give feedback. I'm sure you're wanting feedback oh, yeah. from these from these deals. I love feedback. I yeah. mean, like, I don't answer to a lot of like, yep, I'm not the kind of person. But mm -hmm. you know, when I listen to it, I'm like, hey, this is what we need to study on. This is what we need mm -hmm. to work on. And you did a great job in here. You know, and that's that's the kind of focus I like to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm not very public about like, okay, we need to tell everybody that we're doing this. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Let's keep it to ourselves, practice and, and show take, it all on the table. Show it all on the table. Show it <laughs> show it out. You know, it's like it's like telling the boys about, you know, the pregame, you know, you go practice on a basketball, you know and showtime comes, you don't want to go start practicing. You, know? <laughs> right. you don't want to practice that half court shot <laughs> during a game. No. You know? You wanna practice those during practice. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's why. So roughly when do you think the Cafe Melange will be ready? Um, they said the build out was gonna be I mean the whole building's gonna be done by October. Okay. So I'm hoping to get that in by October to beat the beat the holidays. holidays. Yeah, I want to get that in. Okay, so and then in the meantime, these Brenners will be at the Bonjour location, Bonjour location from uh, now until until then. Until then. And okay. then after the Brenner stuff and Cafe Milan open, I'm changing Cafe uh, Bonjour back to a deli shop because ah. that's where I'm making all my cured meats. That's right. You're going to cure meats for the new place yes. out of that same space and yes. also have it open to the public for just like a walk-in lunch right. takeout. Type exactly. Place. Yeah. And um, you know we're going to put more. Um, items onto the deli side, make it more to Delo. I'm gonna start prosciutto, I'm gonna okay. do uh, chorizo. I'm gonna try to cure <laughs> anything and everything. <laughs> cure everything. Cure, <laughs> yeah. While you're at cancers out there, world yeah, peace. Yes. Those will be on down, right? <laughs> That'll be on down, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, That's man. Awesome. Well, I, it sounds like I can't wait to get over there. You know, I'm just up the street, so I'll be uh, down to see you real soon. Very good. Another place that's been around for a long time, and I was just there a couple weeks ago, I had the Red Beans and Rice, which is the Red Cup over on Classen Avenue. And yes. I remember going to OCU, going to the Red Cup. <laughs> it hasn't changed a whole lot, but that yeah. food is, is underrated, in my opinion. It is fantastic. It's great. Yeah, it's, it's sort of great. Over, it's uh, turning 21 here in, in 20 days, I believe. And... Uh, 
you know, just started as a coffee house, early 90s coffee house, pretty much all they had, a few bites, and then gradually over time started adding menu. food. And now it's, yeah, it's a full-on uh, vegetarian cafe. And a vegan, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a vegetarian vegan cafe. But uh, this new supper club, they do, they kind of blow it out. And they do fine dining, like uh, I think this next one's going to be an eight-course dinner. So, Red Cup. Got a big thing going on here. You like to call it the Red Cup Supper Club? We're calling it the Red Cup Supper Club. <laughs> Very creative. I yeah, love it. Yeah, you know, just uh, yeah. <laughs> But cool. So, yeah, because Red Cup, we, we're just talking about this, been around for close to 21 years, yep. right up on 21 years. Coming up on it. And food has always sort of been a gradual thing. It was a, yeah, open as sure. a coffee house. And now you're full. Tell, tell folks about the, uh, the Supper Club. Well, you know, uh, Supper Club, what we're doing right now is we're moving into this period where I'm kind of building up mm -hmm. building up this thing so we can hopefully open up a finer restaurant mm -hmm. something to let me uh, explore my creativity a little sure. bit more than the red sure. cup allows yeah yeah and that's cool so what you've done is every month uh what is it the first sunday it's the second sunday second sunday of every month okay second sunday of every month and it's, so what what like for instance coming up this sunday you got one what can folks expect well you know uh we're working uh these dinners have been kind of reservation only we've only been mm -hmm. doing about 20 seats mm -hmm. um Eight courses, mm -hmm. fine dining style. Mm -hmm. um, so when you say fine dining vegan, you know, there's a lot of folks that, uh, like, what does that even mean? A giant salad bowl? No. I think they're like that with <laughs> anything that says vegan. Yeah. Right, right. But, you know, I've been to one of these. It's, it, they're great. It's, I mean, it's very satiating food. Mm -hmm. I mean, tell folks how you so, approach vegan fine dining. Well, in, in this instance of uh, vegan fine dining, you know, we're focusing a lot on local produce mm -hmm. uh, and that you know, especially with the summer, mm -hmm. it just kicks mm -hmm. off and there's, you know, this bounty is, bounties of yeah. vegetables out there. So Had I mean, some good rain this year too. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. but not too much where it right. kills right. everything off. That's right. So. That's right. But it's, it's great. Uh, we've, I kind of set it up so that it works in a way that is, is fulfilling. Mm -hmm. And I'm a meat eater myself, mm -hmm. but I, I tend to eat mostly vegan yeah. at the restaurant just because mm -hmm. it's, it's a good, healthy way. Yeah. It's available to me on an right. everyday basis. That's so. right. I kind of dabble in both, and I think I can develop flavors a lot better than just somebody who has been vegetarian or vegan for a long time. Sure. It's kind of a different approach, you know. Mm -hmm. and that's yeah, the bringing way I it with it. a with a carnivore's mm -hmm. insight. Yeah, you know that kind of hunger that. Yeah. Just... <laughs> it's not necessarily just a lifestyle choice. It's just what you're eating, and yeah. you want to make it as good as you possibly mm -hmm. can. Absolutely. Okay, so folks want to come to the to the dinner. Uh, what do they need to do? Well, you know, uh, we we have links on our Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, mine at. Chef Beeve or the Red Cups, which is at the RC and OKC. Okay. There's links in the bio. Uh, I have events on our Facebook page okay. and just uh, links to Eventbrite so they can buy the tickets through that. Very good. So now, first off, before you go, though, tell how long have you been at the Red Cup? I've been at the Red Cup eight years now. Eight years. And that wow. was when I was 16. 16 years old. First started. And so, yeah, and so you've just sort of, and you started out just helping out, and now, mm -hmm. you're, now you're the man. I'm the man. <laughs> One of the owners. <laughs> Making the food. Oh, and you're helping to evolve it into something new. That's right. And that's 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 the great thing about the Red mm -hmm. Cup is it's always been an organic growth. So there's mm -hmm. no real, it's not really set as a coffee right. shop, you know, it'll right. evolve into something else. And that's right. Whatever's hopefully, needed. Hopefully by the end of this year, we'll, ha we'll finally have that new menu. He's got bigger plans, you know, he talked to us about how he'd like to, uh, to expand, you know, get the Red Cup to a certain point and then branch out and open a little more of a fine dining concept to uh, spread his wings a little bit as part of the Red, Red Cup family. Very good. We started with the entrees. Let's move to the appetizers. We'll do it yes. in, uh, in reverse order. Uh, Torchies coming to Norman. Torchies, yes. Torchies has arrived. A little bit of controversy. I guess uh, the Norman transcript kind of had a fun story over the weekend about some of the complaints because Torchies' slogan is, damn good tacos. I got to tell you, their tacos are really good. They are. They're that good. Yeah. They're that good. They're yeah. slogan good. I agree. I've been there. <laughs> I've been there enough. <laughs> it, it, um, it's very welcome. It's an Austin, uh, Texas-based company. Uh, they're now in Colorado, Dallas, Houston, uh, not even that old. Our own Catherine Mathis from uh, Big Truck Tacos, she was a consulting chef in, in its early days at Torchies. In fact, Big Truck uh, is definitely inspired by that experience. So, yeah, that's an exciting thing. Norman has all kinds of things coming up, though. Red Rock Canyon Grill. Uh, everybody knows the Hal Smith concept over on the lake, on Lake Hefner. Uh, it's going to be their second location, and it'll be in Norman, and it's going to open in about a little under a month. Food is always really good there, reasonably priced. Oh, yeah. Great view up there at uh, Lake yeah. Hefner, but I mean, really, it's good. Yeah, yeah. I've always been surprised that you know Hal, Hal's group 
they have all kinds of franchises. But Red Rock's really one, that, it's about my favorite, I would say. And it's hard, to, he's got so many, I, I, that's kind of off the top of my there, head. There is a Red Rock in Tulsa. I don't know if that's a Hal Smith Yeah, or it not, is, but, it is. Okay. That was the second one, but I, it's been a much slower process with Red Rock. And it's and it's really, that, that one really is their baby. They, they I think they they just feel a little like, they don't want to let that one go too far away from where, out, out of their sight. But anyway, Norman's gonna get one here in about a month. And they're also going to get a very unique concept uh, in September. It's going to be called Toro El Toro Chino, and the owner there is a guy named Jerry Reardon. Jerry is uh, was the chef at Cafe Five Hundred One for many years, and it also he was also front of the house uh, manager for for a long time. But he's got tons of experience, and he's got a group of partners, and it's going to be a Latin Asian fusion restaurant. Huh. So yeah. So any examples like that in the market right now? Not at all. This Latin is and Asian. Yeah, no. This is strictly taking. I mean, and there's nothing. Uh, this is all original dishes. If you, they have a Facebook page you can follow right now and see some of the progress they're making, uh, some of the pictures, and they're also offering catering right now and doing some private dinners. And their numbers are all on the Facebook page. Folks are interested about that. But yeah, the the photos are all. It's pretty much just you know creations. You know, just a lot of ingredients from both cultures kind of crossed over to create its own cuisine. So should be interesting. All right, so that's down in Norman. Mm -hmm. Up in Edmond, uh, some shabu action. Yes, shabu shabu has finally come to the metro. Yes, <laughs> uh, folks who have been uh, keeping up with us for a while will remember Tokyo Pot up in Stillwater. Good stuff. Un unforgettable experience. What a what you a place. You put on a goofy hat, you can, <laughs> <laughs> you can dip meats and hot stuff. It's good. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the new place is called Mu Shabu. It's in Edmond. It opened in May, I believe, late May. And it's that same style, which is the, it's more or less uh, Asian, uh, it was shabu shabu means swish swish. So you're taking raw meat, putting it into hot oil or hot broth, uh, very much like uh, fondue, uh, sort of yeah. that style, communal style. So it's, it's more fun and experiential than necessarily mind blowing flavors because it's pretty simple flavor wise. It's good, as you, I'm sure you remember. It was really good. But yeah, it's, an, it's a great, it's a fun, it's a fun way to dine. So that's there, and, uh, and I haven't had a chance to check it out yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so that's already open. The Sunnyside yes. Cafe has opened. Yes. That's at 6th and Class, and yes. I was there. Yes, uh, Sunnyside Diner. They're doing breakfast. Sunnyside and, Diner. Yes, that's Sunnyside right, because Diner. it says Diner on the yes, outside. Yes, really, you can't hardly miss it. Yeah, uh, breakfast and lunch, and that is brought to you by the folks that own uh, Hillbillies and from the founder of uh, SME Burger Joint, uh, Shannon Roper and Allie Branstetter, who worked at SME for many years. They, uh, they now co-own uh, hillbillies together and they just recently opened sunnyside so it's a pretty straightforward i was there for the one of the soft openings very good biscuits gravy pancakes french toast you know all the, all the classics i thought i was there for breakfast on the fourth of july uh, and thanks to them for being open on the fourth of july <laughs> i was like they did simple well i had an omelet it was a very good omelet it yeah. tasted well it wasn't just crazy Made from scratch. crazy missed the mark no it was do do simple yeah. well the bacon was really good coffee yeah. was great yep and they, they bring by the little tablets at the end that you uh, swipe your card and, and sign with. So that's right. A that's bit right. Of high tech at the Sunnyside Diner. That's right. So you got low tech and high tech clashing in this sort of cool, retro looking uh, building. Uh, and another one that's coming up here really soon for us is Goro Ramen. That's going to be opening in uh, the Plaza District, I think, next week, early next week. I'm going to a dinner there tonight to kind of check it out. The dinners they're doing this week will sort of dictate the opening, so it's hard to say for sure what day next week they're going to open. But I, but if they're not open on Monday, I'll be very surprised. And that's uh, that's Rachel Cope. It's our friends over at Empire Slice House. Yes, Empire Slice House. Yes, and they're also going to be opening uh, Revolution uh, later on. So yeah, big things there. And this is uh, uh, Jeff Chancellor, the chef there, very very uh, gifted. Uh, he w recently went back to Japan to study ramen learn how to do this stuff right and he's got he's got incredible skills so very high expectations for this opening get you out of here on this okay. it's coming back every fall odyssey de culinaire yes it's coming back yes uh july 21st and 28th are the dates i said fall it's yeah <laughs> or summer weeks. you're in a couple of weeks that too no yeah it's coming up uh and and that's just a bunch of local chefs here in oklahoma city we'll we'll uh do a dinner here at the skirvin some Tulsa chefs will do some dinner. We'll do a big dinner at the Renaissance in Tulsa. It's uh, like an eight course or five course meal, and all the money goes to the Pro Start program and the, and the uh, local foundation that helps sort of, you know, push forward the idea of, of culinary arts careers and hospitality careers too, hotel management and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, they do scholarships and they support these programs to sort of help their industry 
move forward into the future. But the, and the dinners are great. I can't I can't account for the entertainment because I will be emceeing both <laughs> events this year. So I'm I'm told that there might be a discount on the tickets because of that. But don't hold me to that. So we'll see. Tux black, black tie. <laughs> no tux this year. T-shirt. I, what, I have done you, a tux in the past. I think I'll just go with a regular cut and tie probably. All right, he's Dave Cathy. The food column can be found in the Oklahoma every Wednesday. Uh, he vlogs religiously. You can find that online at newsok.com. And follow him on Twitter at the Food Dude. Uh, even his Thunder commentary can be found <laughs> on the Twitter account as well. Sorry, Katie. <laughs> Thanks for the bites of knowledge. Appreciate it. You bet, man. <laughs>